Okay, welcome to part two. I'm actually going to talk about it now. The key to having a system which will work is communities. And imagine it like a honeycomb. So you've got a country with 60 million and the community size has to be about 150 people because that is the natural size for a human tribe. 150 people would be enough people to to be everyone you ever knew in your life pretty much without feeling you needed to know more people. 150 people is quite a lot. And it, it's it's a number that will stick together in a whole age range. If you say plus or minus 30, so if you get sort of 180, 190, 200, what would happen is the tribe would naturally divide and become two. And if you had sort of, you know, perhaps less than 100, the tribe perhaps wouldn't be strong enough, so it would keep getting smaller because people were going over to other tribes that were that were stronger. Maybe it's plus or minus 50. Anyway, so ballpark figure, 150 people. So then you've got, you know, then you have neighbouring neighboring communities. So say just pulling a random number, about 20. So 20 times 150 would be 2,000... Three thousand. <laughs> Sorry, that took so long. Three thousand people. Good, that's an easy number to work with. I hope I'm right. Yeah, of course I'm right. Three thousand. Okay, and then you know that would be a, a group of small communities. And what you'd have is, and what's also important in the communities is what the hierarchy is. And you know you can't sit there going, well, we'll have a vote. You know who's the best. <laughs> Imagine that community voting who's the best. It's not. It's not going to be good, is it? So, the easy and logical thing you have is age. And there we go. You know, respect your elders. And uh, the eldest people have, if you like, the the trump on someone less older. That's the only fair way to do it. Because everyone gets a go if they survive to old age. Or, you know, maybe you'd have the oldies. <laughs> They'd have their little discussion. I think you'd get this natural sort of age ranges, you know. The children would play. The adolescents would do what they do. <laughs> the new adults would they'd probably go off and travel. So you'd be allowed to do that. It's not like you have to be stay in your community and you never see anyone else. Of course, you could go to neighbouring communities and see other people, but your community would be the self-sufficientness of it. Your community would have to make sure you had enough food um, and water and you'd have to deal with your own shit and get your own firewood and you know whatever you needed to survive now we could you could have this in our sort of society at the moment and it would be revolved around money me i'd much rather get rid of money because it is the control and take back some of the land absolutely because we'd need more of the land um so yeah there's the hierarchy from the age and your self-sufficiency but th this is how you would also, through your sort of, you, or you'd nominate a liaison person who would communicate the, com the your community's wishes higher up. You know, that's all it would be. And, you know, someone, that would be somebody's role. And 
and so anyone could have an idea you know 16 year old kids oh, I've got a brilliant idea tells the elders about it they say oh that's a good idea tell the liaison guy he goes up to tell the um, to tell the the slightly larger community of 20 about so there will be a liaison person for that 20 group as well and then so forth and the idea could spread and it would just be an idea wouldn't it be something someone could take on or not and maybe maybe we'd have if we had the technology we use the internet you know you'd still have your your global stuff like that but I think these are the fundamental things we need to look at and we also need to look at food like that and a lot of people are waking up to the fact that um, you know what we've been eating traditionally isn't necessarily the best thing for us um, and when I say traditionally it seems like you know we eat a lot of meat in this country and that we're not necessarily meat eaters we are apes now you know meat has maybe been seen as the the highest form of food and so therefore we've strived to eat lots of meat but you know our our intestines are too long for meat eaters uh, meat, meat putrefies in our intestines because it stays there for three days whereas in a lion or something is only in there for a day or a day and a half so you know we are apes we eat fruit and roots and ants and the odd bit of meat and then even then it should be raw and not cooked so hopefully enough people are waking up to this and you would actually find that you know you could have a raw food diet and because everything you eat would be beneficial and is not causing your body to do a heck of a lot of work to sort things out you don't need to eat as much um, you know and fasting is really good for you I mean it's good for you in the sense of your body can get on with doing repairs because it's not having to digest food and it's good for you in spiritual sense as well it's very spiritually uplifting to go without food just try it okay don't consume any fats don't if you're gonna have drink tea don't put milk in it because that'll give you hunger pangs if you wake up in the morning don't eat drink a cup of tea without milk use a bit of lemon and um, make it a bit weaker herb tea right you'll be fine I mean yeah so you know we we have the we have to have this sort of this knowledge this understanding so we can grow our food keep a goat or something goat's milk much better than cow's milk cow's cow's milk is designed to get cows to grow to like a ton animal okay so goat's milk is much more in tune with our with what we would have and anyway maybe adults better off without it anyway I, I still have it but anyway these are the sort of things you know we actually get what we need it wouldn't be a problem we'd be able to sort out our food no problem food shelter and warmth and what have we got then in our community we've got companionship you know this is the thing we are lacking in our current situation so then also right you've got your community you've you've got your defense everyone's together everyone knows each other if a stranger comes in you should you know invite in strangers you know that should be the way if you want to be able to go off and wander into other communities then surely you've got to accept people who are wandering around and you know and that's that's a nice thing isn't it so you know hopefully it would it would work like that but you know therefore if when communities know each other and someone comes in you know there's no need for security and stuff like that because everyone knows everyone so you just sort of check them out make sure they're okay you don't need all this government control and in that community again you will bring up your kids you will nurture them and teach them 
yeah, I mean, maybe, maybe you have events and stuff like that. People put on events so that all kids can get together at some point or something. But you know, I don't think I don't think teaching kids the, the best way is to put a class of thirty together because then you're having to control them. You know, there's there's sort of too many, there's too much interactions going on. I don't think that's the best way. I think a small group of children is probably much better. You have things like the Fantastic Five and the Secret Seven. You know, a nice group of kids. This world could be so much better. You know, one thing I remember from being a kid is constantly being told to shut up. I'm just a kid and I don't know what I'm talking about. You know, but I knew that I did. Fine, I didn't have the understanding of the world that adults and parents had, but from a naive position, things that I said were not stupid. And sometimes I was spot on. My own son is six, and I only have him for three days of the week. But, um, yeah... You know, when he's with me, he's on a completely free reign. I've... The only thing I've ever sort of laid down, I said, I've one rule, and that's you eat the food I give you. If I make you food, you eat it. So, you know, I've let him do a lot of things, and it's it's not a problem. His little phases, like swearing, I'm let him swear. He hardly ever swears, right? It, now and again he does. I don't make a big deal out of it. But, you know, I had one rule with that, and I was just like, you know, not in front of other children or sort of other people. <laughs> to sort of make that a rule in the end. And, you know, a couple of times he's nearly infringed that. But, so, but mainly, like, not completely free reign, of course I have, Boundaries, but much, much, much bigger boundaries than than his certainly his mother or the school, because you know there seems to be this. A lot of people have this feeling of it's, um, you know, no no tolerance. You know, sort of. I know this is way off the subject now, isn't it? You know, they're sort of like rigid guidelines, must stick to this, otherwise strict punishments, don't, 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 you know, and you're wrong and we know best. There's a lot of pain and torture for a child. And, um, you know, if I died now, I don't want to be reborn and have to go through all that again. So, yeah, God, children would be capable of so much more. And that's another key thing as well. I feel I've said this before. We can get so much more spiritual and actually use our brains and our mind because it has powers. We can heal ourselves. Obviously, we need to have some of the right foods, but 30% of the healing is the placebo effect, is the belief effect, you know, and you can push that even further as well. You can meditate, study areas of your body. You can do all of this just knowledge and learning they're trying to stop us remember it's the beast now so you work for the beast and it won't be long until we come to the choice where they've got to put a right chip in our hand our forehead and you know then don't you and it, you know it hasn't happened then but this even this could be sort of a m metaphorical thing so we know now, we know we're up against the beast. Everyone working, governments and everything, they're working for the beast. So when we've decided to stop working for the beast, <laughs> if we were all self-employed, it wouldn't function, would it? All right, if we were all self-employed, I don't, wouldn't get many calls as a computer repairer. But they have competition of about a third of the population. So, 
but you know we could do it we, you know our gardens might be a bit small people in tower blocks and cities yeah you see the cities they can't they gotta get out of the cities <sighs> catch 22 right how long has this been right sorry anyway thank you if you listened and um speak to you soon bye